Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here. Uh, today we're going to be playing Conan Exiles, which is a game that recently came out of Game Preview. It has 1,000 gamer score, and you can earn that gamer score in about 30 minutes if you follow along with this video. Now, there's one achievement at the very end that does require a co op partner, so you'll want to keep that in mind. Obviously, if you're looking at purchasing this game digitally, it's going to cost you $50, which is a lot, but you can also get the game on a physical disc. So if you want to buy it and then sell it or buy it and share it with a buddy or, uh, you know, whatever you want to do, rent it, you do have that option if you so desire. So the game will take us around 30 minutes. We'll be using a whole bunch of kind of exploits that are built into the game, and I'll be showing you all of those. Also, a quick shout out to Omega D's for helping me with this initially. He knows the game a lot better than I do, and he explained a lot of things to me. I will link his YouTube channel down below. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is start a game. From the main menu, you want to click single player slash co-op. Then you want to press activate co-op. Then you want to choose the civilized difficulty, and that'll bring you into the loading screen. There are a total of 25 achievements. Uh, they are worth 1,000 gamer score, as I mentioned previously. Uh, we'll be getting some of them very, very quickly, very easily. Some of them are a little bit more, um, you know, take a little bit more time or whatnot. And I will have some time links down below if you're kind of struggling and looking for information about something specifically. But uh, I would recommend following this video in one go because there are a lot of options I set near the beginning that you want to keep on your entire journey through. So it's easier to just kind of do it in one lobby. From the very beginning, just choose a character, male or female, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you want to finalize your character. Uh, if you're playing in the European region, you will have nudity on your video. So we do not have that. And then you can just skip the introduction of the cinematic there. Um, there's a couple of things we will want to do. Now, okay, as soon as we spawn... What we want to do is we want to press back, and back will open up the, the, the pause screen, basically. And what we'll want to do here is go to settings. Once in settings, we want to go to the server tab. Once in the server tab under general, we want to go inside of the general tab and press the button that says make me admin. Click that, and you'll notice in the top right, it says admin rights granted. That's very important. You need to be an admin to do a lot of these next steps. So now we can back out and we can press back to bring up this menu and there will be a new button called admin panel. And this is kind of the uh, method we will be using to get all of these achievements very easily. So we'll want to open up the admin panel and it's going to be very hard for you to see because everything on the screen is so tiny. So I'll try to make sure I point out where I am. So on the kind of left of the screen, what you want to do is you want to enable God mode. You want to enable no sprint cost, and then you want to turn off eating, turn off hunger, and turn off thirst. That's going to be step one, and that's just kind of setting yourself up for the future. Now, the next thing you want to do, I'd probably recommend just changing the time of day to noon. That way, you don't have to worry about the lighting changing and it getting dark on you or anything. That's all kind of optional. But anyways, the next step, what we want to do is in this admin panel... We want to go to set level and click set level and then we can type out any level we want and I'll be clicking level 60 entering that in to the um, into the bar right there and then applying it and you will unlock achievements for getting to level 10 20 30 40 50 and 60 and they will basically just unlock all in a row uh, sometimes they do unlock out of order but you should get six achievements uh, worth 80 gamer score for doing uh, just that. All you did was go into the admin panel and, uh, you know, make yourself level 60 and apply that. Perfect. So the next step we're going to do is there's an achievement for flying a certain distance and there's achievement for falling a certain distance. And these ones also we can do in the admin panel. Now I'm going to run a little bit forward, just a little bit here, to give myself a little bit more clearance and let the achievements kind of uh, go through. Now that we are ready, we're going to go into the admin panel again. We're going to click on the left-hand side 
near the middle-ish, there's a button called fly. We'll click that button and this will enable us to fly. Go back into the game and hold A. This will basically allow you to jump and keep jumping. I'm holding A for about 10 to 15 seconds and then I will let go of it and hopefully this one is a little bit glitchy in terms of when it unlocks. But once you kind of gain maximum altitude, you'll unlock an achievement uh, called Iron Shadows in the Moon. And I actually stopped pressing A just now in order for the game to kind of figure out where I am in the sky. Sometimes, and I'm going to walk around a little bit, move around a little bit, and hopefully it unlocks. Like I said, this one's not, you know, this one's a little bit uh, weird in terms of when it decides to unlock. Sometimes it'll unlock within 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, just keep flying up until it eventually unlocks. Now, I've been holding A for quite some time, and eventually the Iron Shadows in the Moon did unlock. Uh, your kind of, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. You might get it after the five seconds like some of my friends, or you might get unlucky like me and have to hold it for a minute or two. Nonetheless, it should unlock eventually, and then we can go back into the admin panel, and not far from that button that says fly on the left-hand side, we have a button that says walk. And we'll want to click that button, which will cause our character to fall from the sky. If our character falls for a total of three seconds, he will unlock the achievement called the Cliffs Reel, which is for falling a total of three seconds. We've now been falling for about five or ten, and that should unlock that achievement any second here. Perfect. Now, the next thing I want to do is walk forward from the path we spawned in. And I'm going to be looking for a specific item. You can always come back here if you need to later. Um, but I'm just going to follow the path. And hopefully we find it. So there's this dragon. The dragon kind of flies away. And um, hopefully up here there is a small book or document. And we'll have to press X to pick that up, and it should say, find signs of intelligent life. Now, the dragon can kind of spawn anywhere in this little opening area, but essentially you're looking for a small book that you can pick up. Sometimes it'll be on this platform. Sometimes it'll be on a rock kind of earlier uh, in the little path. Uh, you will need that. I'll kind of uh, talk about it a little bit later again. Nonetheless, we are going to be on to the next step, which is the building shit step. So what I want to do is open up the map by pressing right on the D-pad. This will bring up our map. I'm the little icon here that says player, and this is the broken highway, which is where we started the game. Now, I can really go anywhere I want. Uh, I'm going to go here just because this is what I kind of practiced in. There's this little island uh, with a small kind of beach, uh, but you can really spawn anywhere you want um, for this next step as long as it's not in the beginning area. So we'll press Y, and that will begin our uh, teleportation. There's only one or two more slightly glitchy achievements, um, like the fly one, but hopefully we won't have too many problems. Now, once we spawn, make your way kind of down to the beach here, and what we we'll want to do is press back and go to the admin panel. And what we want to do is we have god mode and no sprint, so this guy won't kill us. Don't worry about it. We'll want to go all the way over to the right-hand side. And once on the right-hand side, we'll want to go to spawn gear. Go to the gear tab and spawn the Acheronian Longsword. Press it once in order to spawn it. Then if you hold LB, it should bring up your weapon wheel and you can equip it. There we go. You should be able to take down this uh, crocodile pretty quickly just so it stops annoying us. And once you kind of spawn that sword, you should get the by this axe I rule achievement. All right, so now that that's kind of over with, we can go to the next achievement, which is for creating a building. So go to your admin panel. On the right hand side of the admin panel, you want to go to the building tab. You want to scroll down the list of items and you want to go to black ice reinforced wooden foundation you want to probably click it two or three times so i'll do it three and then you also want to spawn black iced 
black ice reinforced wooden wall. You'll want to click that probably six or seven times. That should automatically equip to your weapon wheel, which you can cycle through by holding LB. But if it doesn't, you'll have to press start. And then you'll have to uh, equip things on this screen. Perfect. So let's quickly build uh, a little house for ourselves. This one's a little glitchy, but hopefully it doesn't give us too many problems. Pull out the black ice reinforced wooden foundation. And then place three blocks. After you build three blocks... Open up the walls and then try to build the walls kind of on the outside of this uh, little house. And there we go. Create a home. Hopefully this will unlock the achievement properly called the Scarlet Citadel for building a house. Crocodile has to get out of here anytime soon. Next up, we'll go back to the admin panel. And what we want to do is we want to spawn the item, which is the bed. So you'll go into the tab for building and you will want to spawn one bed. The bed should automatically apply to your weapon wheel. If it doesn't figure it out, uh, you know, put it from your inventory into your weapon wheel and then place it. Once you place the bed, you should get the O oh, Sleeper Awake achievement right there. All right, and we are off to the next thing. What we want to do is go to the admin panel, go to the right-hand side, go to the building tab, and get one Altar of Ymir. Again, it should apply automatically to our weapon wheel, and you want to build one of these things. You will have to obviously find some level ground to place it on. Um, so this is why I'm kind of doing everything near the beach. Once I have placed the altar of Ymir, I can go up to it, press X on it one time, or hold X on it for more options. And I will unlock the, the God in the Bowl achievement. That's kind of, you know, the basic building shit achievement. So next what we're going to do is get... The Wheel of Pain, uh, which is for an achievement called What Do I Know of Cultured Ways. This one's a little bit more intensive than some of the other ones. But if you stick along, it really isn't too hard. You want to go to the admin panel. You want to spawn a building item. And the building item you need is called the Wheel of Pain. And for this one, instead of scrolling, I would recommend that you use the search feature and look up the word wheel. Uh, don't get, don't grab the greater or lesser wheel. Just grab the regular wheel of pain. After you grab the wheel of pain, feel free to set it down. You know, wherever the game will kind of let you. It can be a little bit rough here to let you know to find a location that uh, the game's okay with. So right here works. So once I spawn the weapon of wheel, there's a couple more things I will need. Go back to the admin panel. Go to the right-hand side, go to gear, go to the search bar, and type in the word fiber, F-I-B-E-R. And you will want to grab the fiber bindings. The next item you want is, I actually close the admin panel and load it back up, because if you search two times in the same instance, it kind of screws up a little bit. So I like to close the admin panel, reopen it. I'm going to have to spawn another gear item. This gear item is known as the truncheon. So we're going to search for T-R-U-C. Um, I believe I spelt that wrong. There it goes. So we'll put T-R-U-N-C-H-E-O-N. The truncheon. And we will grab that from that as well. Next up, what we want to do is equip both of these items. Hold our weapon wheel. Select the fiber bindings, which you can see in my left hand now. Select the truncheon, which is in my other hand now. And now we are kind of ready to fight anything that comes our way. So we're going to need an enemy to fight. Go into your admin panel. Go to the middle kind of section to the tab that says spawn humanoids. In Spawn Humanoids, we want to spawn one Altar Axe Grinder. Any enemy will should work, but this one's kind of the easiest. So spawn one of those. He'll spawn directly in front of us, 
as you see and we are going to fight him so just keep pressing rb attacking him um you, because we have god mode and all that he shouldn't really damage us too much uh he does take a decent amount of hits um i'll i'll tell you about a way to like one hit all the bosses later but i don't want to enable that too early because there's a couple of steps i wanted to do without all the uh damage multipliers so this could take you, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds. However long it takes for you to damage the top bar of his life completely. Uh, once you do that, he actually gets knocked out and not killed. So all we want to do is keep hitting the Altar Axe Grinder until he is on the ground, knocked out. Alright, now once you see him on the ground, he might look dead. But if you go up to him, it'll say press X to drag and it'll say he's unconscious. So you're going to press X to drag his body. And you'll see that there's a rope connected to him. And then what you want to do is go up to your wheel of pain and hold X on the wheel, uh, press X on the wheel of pain to put him into the wheel of pain. You should get the journey step for putting an enemy in the wheel of pain. And it'll unlock the what do I know of cultured ways achievement worth 30 gamer score. Now the next step is another one that's a little bit more involved. Um, we're doing all the kind of complicated stuff first and then we're doing we're saving a big chunk of like really easy bosses and all the gamer score kind of for the end um, So we have to build a flawless item uh, This can kind of take uh, you know multiple ways, but we'll start with we'll just we'll just go step by step And it's not too bad You want to go to your admin panel You want to go to the right hand side and look through buildings and the building you want is the blacksmith's bench Obviously, it's all alphabetical this will show up after Black Ice. Blacksmith's Bench. You'll want one of those. It should go automatically into your weapon wheel. And you will want to build it on somewhere that is, you know, flat. Right here should work. Perfect. So now that we have a uh, 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 the bench built, we want to go back to our admin panel. We want to go to the Spawn Humanoids tab in the middle. Before doing anything from here, what we want to do is go to the checkbox underneath the list and it'll say spawn as converted thrall item. And you have to make sure that this is checked. Then you can go into the actual enemy list or the humanoid list and we will want to spawn blacksmith underscore four underscore Sumerian. So it'll go black hand armorer, black hand whatever, and then it'll go to black underscore hand underscore blacksmith underscore four underscore Sumerian. So that's what we want to spawn one of. That'll go into our inventory. What we want to do is then quickly press X. Do not hold it. Just press it. And we will be brought to the crafting station menu. We will then have this item in our menu here on the left. You'll see a small kind of... Um, blacksmith icon and we'll want to transfer this over into the thrall uh, box near the top middle there and once you do that if done correctly you should be spawning the enemy that we spawned the the level four blacksmith should now be stationed at the crafting station so now what you want to do is interact with the crafting station by pressing x and what we need to do is build a flawless item so what we want to do is look through her crafting and find a flawless item. And the reason I'm being a little bit vague about this is because everyone's going to have potentially different items in their crafting based on a bit of randomization. And so I decided that flawless hardened steel mace is what I'm going to build. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to know the knowledge of hardened steel mace. Um... And then I'll be able to craft it if I have the items in my inventory. So what I'm going to do is pause the game or, or, or press start. And then I'm going to go into my feats. And once in my feats, I'm going to go to press RB to go to the next category. And the category I want is under warrior. And what I need is I need to have all the research to create the item that I want. So I want to create the flawless star metal mace. So what it requires is it requires me to have the hilt maker um, ability. So I'm going to buy that right here. And the hilt maker requires me to have the three things you can kind of see in the top right corner there. So let's go, let's go get that. So I need the uh, warrior. So let's buy that. 
I also need the pickaxe, and I need like a like a campfire level three. So we're gonna go to stone tools to buy that kind of campfire I was talking about, and we're also gonna need all the pickaxes. So I'm gonna go to stone tools here, and I'm gonna buy all everything I possibly can in this option. This might seem really confusing, but as long as you're building the same item, it should be pretty basic. But nonetheless, what I'm doing is I'm basically just getting everything I need in order to be able to make the hilt. Once I'm able to make the hilt, I need to research how to make the star metal mace. So now that I have the star metal mace in green, it means that I have all of the knowledge I need to actually build it. So now I need to actually talk to her and it should now, instead of being grayed out, it should be, it should be there. And it'll tell me what I need to build it. I need a short handle and I need 12 star metal bars. So let's go into the admin panel and spawn the things I need in order to make this item. We're going to go into resource and we're going to look for short handle. We're going to obviously spawn ourselves one short handle. Then we're going to go to other and we're going to look up the word star. And we want the star metal bar, and we need 12 of them. So I'd recommend you just keep your inventory simple. Spawn exactly 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now that I have 12 of those, I should be able to talk to her. I need to actually grab the short handle from the left of the screen and put it into the middle. I need to grab the bars and put it into the middle. And then I should be able to go to the crafting section on the right and craft a flawless star metal mace. And for whatever reason, my game kind of glitched. I needed to go in and out of the menu and move the items back and forth for me, able, for me to be able to get the crafting option. Uh, you should be able to just click A on that item now, and it'll craft. Once it crafts, uh, it should say you got a dedicated weapon on your screen, and you should unlock um, the guilt achievement, the guilt, the craft, and the lie. All right, so now we kind of have all of the really complicated stuff out of the way. We do have a couple of like slightly glitchy stuff coming up here. So what we want to do next is we want to travel to the highlands and travel to the volcano. So you'll press right on the D-pad to open up your map. Uh, we are going to go to the very top of the map where it's kind of snowy here. You'll notice this is the volcano, and over here are the highlands. Now, you can't just spawn in the item. You kind of have to run in. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually spawn ourselves over here, and then we're going to run to here. So I'm going to put a, um, a marker somewhere here. doesn't really matter, uh, you know what it is and uh then i'm going to spawn myself over all the way over here by pressing y now as i was saying these are a little bit glitchy so bear with me uh but once you spawn uh, you just want to get yourself situated in here and look towards your marker and basically you just want to run sprint and roll rolling is actually the fastest or dodging I guess the game calls it you'll kind of fall off some of these cliffs hopefully if you did it right it'll say you discovered dragon mouth and if you kind of just keep rolling forward um, it should eventually say you discovered uh, highlands There's a couple more um, trees and cliffs and stuff. Just kind of keep rolling towards your your markers. You'll notice some cliffs over here. And when you come into this open area right here with all these trees, this is the highlands. As you enter, it should pop that achievement for you. I will show you exactly where on the map I am. And as you can see, I'm pretty much directly on that marker that I put before. So I started all the way up here. I came all the way down here, and that's how I got Travel to the Highlands. Next up, we're going to travel to the Volcano. It's this gigantic thing on the map. Uh, similar to the Highlands, we can't just go straight to it. We're going to zoom in to the base of the Volcano. And what I would recommend is that you spawn right around here. It might be hard for you to kind of see. Uh, you might spawn in and, you know, fall off a cliff if you kind of place your pin in the wrong uh, place. But um, just keep kind of coming back, and it should say you discovered the Road of Pilgrim. And there should be a path that leads up the mountain. 
and uh, just try to find this path and make sure you're near the bottom of the path. So here's the bottom of the path where it kind of connects to all the snow. And all we want to do is follow the path up the mountain for about 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, and eventually it'll say you reached the volcano. Congrats. Just keep following the path again. Um, you know. These ones are these ones are a little bit glitchy, but as long as you spawn far enough away and then you run in from like a good distance, they should they're decently consistent. Um, I believe the volcano one unlocks right here. There it goes. Perfect. So uh, that one kind of unlocked perfectly. Next up, what we want to do is we can quickly take a look through our achievements here. We should have uh, one, two, three, uh, seven plus two. We should have nine left, which we do, which is good. Seven of them are all bosses, which are very easy. And then two of them uh, we'll, we'll get into when we get into. Again, they're pretty easy. What you want to do next is uh, fast travel anywhere on the map. I kind of like to go back to that island we were just at, um, you know, because it's pretty open and, and easy to navigate. So I'm going to teleport back to the island we were at. And once we are here, we want to equip a sword. I would recommend the Anchirian Long Sword. <coughs> Sorry. I'd recommend the Anchirian Long Sword, which we crafted earlier. If you don't have one of those, uh, you can just spawn it from the um, gear menu. And then the next thing we want to do is, well, we'll just we'll just kill this thing real quick. The next thing you want to go is to Normal Settings. From here, I want to trigger all the way to Server Settings. In server settings, I want to go to combat. And then I want to get the player damage multiplier up to 10. And I want to do the NPC damage taken multiplier up to 10. I want to make sure I press X to apply these changes. And now I should basically be able to one hit everything. Let's uh, test it quickly on this guy. Poor fella never saw it coming. And, I, and basically, I'll be able to one-hit everything. Perfect. So we're just going to go into a large open area. So we'll go right here. And we're basically just going to spawn all the bosses in order. To do that, we go to the admin panel. We go to spawn humanoids in the top. We're going to go to the search bar and type in the word boss. And search it. The first boss we want to spawn is the crocodile giant. Once we do that... Back up, hit him until he dies. Once he dies, you should get the achievement for the crocodile. Cool. All right, we're on to the next boss admin panel. Spawn humanoids. Type in the word boss. And the boss we're going to go for next is the king beneath boss. That should unlock an achievement as well. That should unlock eventually. Any minute. There it goes. Perfect. All right. Next up, go to admin panel. Spawn humanoid. Type in the word boss. And the next boss we want to spawn is the spider giant. Kill the spider giant with one or two swings in order to unlock that achievement. Back to the admin panel. Spawn humanoids. Type in the word boss. Uh, from here, you want to spawn the kin scourge. This knight looking guy. Kill him. Achievement unlocked. Back to the admin panel. Back to spawn humanoids. Search for the word boss again. And what we want to spawn is the undead dragon. This one is the only one that takes like more than two hits. It'll take like five with all the damage multipliers and stuff on. 
sure we can get a better sword, but this will this is an easy one to spawn. And as soon as the dragon's dead, you should get another achievement. Alright, so we'll go back to the admin panel. We'll go back to spawn humanoids, but this time we're gonna look for the word frost. One of the bosses has a weird name. For some reason, they don't show up unless you write frost. And the one we want to spawn here is Wildlife Frost Giant Boss. Hit him until he dies. To get the next achievement. Any second now. There it goes. And then we'll go back to the admin panel. And for the last boss, we go to Spawn Creatures. And then we search the word boss. And the boss we want to spawn is the sewer abomination. And you want to kill this giant, like, breathing egg thing. And it's dead. Perfect. Last but not least, we have two achievements left. And one of them is for completing the first chapter of the journey. So to do that, to look at the journey, you have to press left on the D-pad. Or you can you press start and then cycle over to the journey tab. And we have to complete this entire first row. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to have to climb something. So all you want to do is find any rocks and just literally you just kind of jump into them and your character will climb them. All right. Journey steps climb. Perfect. Release. The next thing we have to do is eat and drink and sleep. We should have the sleep from creating the bed. Let's get rid of this guy. Uh, and then next we want to eat and drink. So we'll go to the admin panel. On the left hand side, there's a thing called food plus. So we'll click food plus, And then we will click water plus. It's kind of near the middle. Um, and that should give us eating and drinking. As So, again, it's near the middle in the hunger thirst tab on the left side. Click plus on food, plus on water. The next part of the journey will be to uh, use a bed, which we've already done. Clothe yourself. So, for clothes, all we will do is go to the admin panel. Go over to the right-hand side in gear. And then in the gear tab, we want to put some clothes on. So, we'll kind of scroll down and and, you know, find some clothes here. Um, we'll go with Aquilonian bracers, Aquilonian chest plate, Aquilonian helmet, and that'll be uh, enough to, you know, get ourselves clothed. Um, you have to slay something, so kill something. Any of the bosses would have counted for this. We have to craft a tool, which we will do very easily here in a second. Um, you have to find signs of intelligent life, which is... That book that I found at the very beginning, uh, right after I did some of the easy stuff, in the beginning area, I'll show you guys on the map, but in the beginning area of the game, down here, near the, uh, what is this place called? The Broken Highway. On the path from the Broken Highway, you should be able to find a book either sitting on a rock or something, and that'll be the Intelligent Signs of Life. You'll also have to kick, so for kicking, you want to make sure you don't have any of your weapons up. And you want to click the left trigger. The next part of your journey is to dodge. And to dodge, you just press B. Alright, so the last thing we need to do for our journey here is to craft a tool. And what we'll do is we'll press start. And on the right-hand side, we have our crafting menu. And the easiest tool to craft is the stone hatchet. And if you look at the description, it says items required branch and stone, and it requires five of each. Now, you can very easily find these lying around, but if you're going to be cheating, might as well do it all the way and commit. We're going to need uh, to search for resources, and the resource we need is branch. We need five branches, one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to close the admin panel and open it back up so we can avoid the glitch. We're going to go back to spawn item, and we are going to now get stone. We need five stones. One, two, three, four, five. Now we should be able to go to our crafting menu, and we should be able to craft the stone hatchet. Once it crafts, you should get the craft a tool. That'll, create, that'll fully complete the entire row of chapter one at the top here. And that'll unlock uh, 
the Road of Kings achievement. Now, if you look at your achievements, you have one achievement left. It's the Tower of the Elephant. This one's kind of the most complicated and also the one that requires a co-op friend. If you need a co-op friend, you can try to look in the comments down below or you can try to find someone on trueachievements.com or xboxachievements.com or on Twitter or wherever. Um, but you're going to need a friend for this one and what you're going to do is you're going to go to your settings, you're going to go to server settings, uh, general, and then you're going to create a server password that's something easy like the number one and then an admin password as well, which is an at, you know, put up, put the number one in here um, and then make sure you apply this. Now you're going to have your friend join your game. He's going to be prompted for the password, so make sure he puts the password in and then he'll also be able to become an admin and he'll be able to put the password in and then you're basically ready to do the Tower of the Elephant achievement. Now, in order to get this achievement, you're going to want to get your friend to stand near a rock, and then you're going to want to jump onto your friend's head. You're going to want to make sure that your friend also has God Mode turned off. Generally, you just kind of want them to have pretty basic settings. If you get really complicated um, with some of the settings there, you might just want to restart the game and kind of host a new session. You want to jump onto their head nonetheless, and then you want to open up the admin panel. And once inside of the admin panel, you want to go to building structures, for example, and you can do this with any item, but I decided to do it with the black ice reinforced foundation because it is a heavy item. And what you need to do is get over encumbered. And to do that, you'll need to have uh, as much weight on you as possible. So because it's such a heavy thing, it works quite easily. What you want to do is grab that item and then hold the left trigger as you tap A on it, and that will cause you to grab stacks of 100 instead of grabbing one at a time. And all you do is just keep grabbing your stacks over and over and over again until the enemy below you, your friend, dies from the weight and you will grab your final achievement and hopefully grab a thousand gamer score. Again, you want to make sure that your friend doesn't have God Mode on, and you want to make sure that, you know, there's, uh, you know, any damage multipliers or whatever you might have turned on earlier are off. You can just kind of do this in your own instance. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Special thanks to the amazing people on Patreon for supporting the show, and hopefully I see you guys next time. Peace!